Greetings, dear reader. Afore proceeding apace, allow your humble editor to thank ye kindly for purchasing this, my inaugural work of historical dream literature. Undoubtedly, one must ask themselves, why has an esteemed, accomplished, and exceedingly humble man of science, being polymath and autodidact most extraordinary, thus endeavored to reproduce such an obscure and dubious text, let alone one which purports to contain well-nigh universal meanings for the hieroglyphics of dreams, when the practical arts of psychology have now far exceeded these embarrassing origins in modern times. As expected of one thus academic and drawn to such esoteric material, thou art indeed most astute, and thine idle musings deserve well full explication. First, I will confess without shame that this work exists to sustain my employ by tangible means, and rightly so, for no man may be expected to play benefactor without reciprocal benefit received unto himself. Yet primarily, and notwithstanding my own pension, this document was found to be thus egregiously missing from the available physical library of historical dream literature as could be found by exhaustive review. Many more popular and well-known works are available for commerce, and so your editor has elected to recreate this manuscript specifically, such that a physical copy also be ready to hand, and thereby in like manner preserve this instrument for posterity in a modern edition as well. The reader will find this edition greatly condensed in comparison to the source material, which is primarily due to the change in font size and character, but also owed to text and line spacing, as well as the combination of erstwhile disparate sentences into paragraphs of related concepts, whereas these conceptions were heretofore previously displayed individually, each in a new paragraph of but a single sentence, thus so line by line. Contrarywise, many terms and references have been left in their original form, with footnote for the edification of the reader. Grammar, syntax, punctuation, and spelling have likewise been modernized throughout this updated work for a variety of reasons, though in most part to make the text more easily consumed and comprehensible to an audience in the year of our Lord 2020. In fact, one will find... The most archaic use of language resides principally in this unnecessarily loquacious introduction, and thusly because I find it extraordinarily amusing to do so in abject refusal of further justification. The section of dreams interpreted alphabetically, found midway through, at the end of the first treatise, has been significantly reordered to reflect what your editor deemed to be the proper categories. In the original text, some items were listed in a bizarre manner, owing to partial sentences being arbitrarily cut at seemingly random words. For example, one section of the source text began with, To dream that you, and followed with the words, are clothed in silk. This entry was classified in the source text under the so-called alphabetical listing of the A's for R rather than under S for silk, or even C for clothed. This edition reflects liberties taken to order such things into categories more readily searched, thus the entry here referenced being moved to S for silk, rather than A for R. Within this section, the reader will also find both oddly specific references and some few contradictory passages. For example, the text speaks of grinding pepper being an omen, but has no other meaning given for this category of item, say if it be spilled or should cause a sneeze. Another listing for trees gives disparate meanings under the experience of being transformed into a tree within a dream, alternately indicating joy and profit as well as sickness. No explanation is given for these conflicting interpretations of the same imagery. Another inexplicable entry makes note of what it means to see thunder in the dream. Though if this is not merely an artifact of blunder, it may be an erroneously worded reference to seeing lightning. 
Despite my desire and marginal attempt to present the Dream Dictionary material true to its original tone and content, and though I debated whether I should leave it unaltered for the sake of historical accuracy, this section proved incomprehensibly disorganized in its prior form, and was thus utterly useless as written by any logical metric. Notwithstanding such content being entirely useless in general and presented solely for amusement or academic edification. One hopes your editor's category choices prove coherent and that you find this new arrangement infinitely more sensible, aiding in ease of use when seeking out any category listing for a specific type of dream image. Fair criticism of the dreams as omens approach aside, we do see herein, about the broader text, a nascent inkling of what would someday become a more meaningful interpretation of dreams under the rubric of symbols personal to the individual. Though the author classes these things far too broadly, still we see passages that proclaim a dream of great and long continuing rain, hail, tempests, and thunder being significant of afflictions, troubles, dangers, losses, and peril to the wealthy or nobleman, while contrarily to the impoverished sort, they signify repose, for during the storm they are shut up and at rest. Here we see referenced a common set of cultural understanding being applied to the imagery, in some reasonable manner, as dreams of dangerously turbulent weather may well be induced by the waking experience of troubles and loss, though the same thing may have different meaning to a common laborer who anticipates the comfort and relaxation of a period idle from work due to inclement weather. So close and yet so far away, with cause and effect much reversed. Your editor also debated intensely regarding inclusion of the extensive physiognomy section, which fair doubled the size of this work, as it is not explicitly relevant to the broader topic of dreams, being my actual topic of specialty. I opted to revise and include this material for the primary purpose of presenting the original publication as completely as possible but also for the satisfaction of what I hope is the reader's general fascination with the full range of concepts and commentary presented by the original author in historical context. In the discharge of my editorial duties, I was pleased to discover that, despite the expected anachronisms and being a product of its time and particular cultural lens, the original text contained a valuable collection of some surprisingly worthy philosophical discourse, if rare in relation to the dross. Indeed, well aside from the ancient wisdom thus referenced, we find also the primordial beginnings of what would become the modern investigation of non-verbal communication, as found in the arts of reading body language and facial expression. As such, and given the wide variety of subject matter disclosed within this book, should the reader be uninitiated into the secrets of the Illuminati, this treatise should serve to whet the appetite for further study at the very least. That being said, one would hope our dear reader applies the same skepticism to the descriptions contained within this physiognomy as be equally turned towards the preceding discourse on dream hieroglyphs, and for similar reason, not the least upon finding lengthy descriptions of disparate human traits by particular regions and nations, but by various references to the lost art of phrenology. Without addressing the veracity of such claims in any substantive manner, as any reader inclined to this type of book surely needs no such explanation, it should nonetheless stand as a matter of historical interest to hear described the impressions of the author as a learned man of his time. Such a document was, as were many others, distributed as a tome of education and passed among the landed gentry, being taught to read, as peasants were often not, for containing the most scientific of observations. One will note that while our erstwhile translator, Mr. Gent, did scoff at the treatise on dreams, yet he gave much credit to the section upon physiognomy. 
Additional levels of irony and critique obtain when one reflects upon the fact that this work is a modern American update of an English translation of an original French document having been filtered through not only diverse hands across vast nations and multiple continents, but also conducted thus across numerous centuries to be delivered for the enlightenment of an infinitely more sophisticated and broadly knowledgeable audience. I will take no pains to comment further, feeling that no additional explanation is warranted or necessary. For myself, as a man of science in the study of psychology, this manuscript in total holds much delight in being a trove of anthropological treasure. Here we see a lost transitional work, unwedged from the crawl between the wisdom of the ancients and our contemporaneous understanding, as one would pick loose and dislodge an errant flake of popcorn shell, long trapped betwixt the teeth and gums. A satisfying experience, yet none so nutritious. Some of the millennia-old revelations contained within have indeed remained constant, in the intervening centuries, at least insofar as we can adjudge from our present perspective, thus giving credence to the precept which asserts that certain observations stand eternally unassailable across the generations of man, while other claims will be rightly dismissed as ill-conceived and would stand the author much embarrassed were he held to account for his advocacy today. Above all, the very title of this tome should proclaim loudly a mirthful double entendre, as this work was originally presented to satisfy the desirous curiosity for learning in its day, indeed courting such curiosity, as it were, and now exists as a historical curiosity, chock-a-block of erroneous claims amidst which gems of insight yet gleam. For all that this treatise purports to be a work of collected knowledge, yet so our dear reader must not forget that historians of the future will likewise look back upon our own modern hubris with similar mirth, as we yet rightly reflect upon even such medical knowledge as was extolled to be fact within only the past century, and stands revealed as much mistaken today. If one takes away nothing else from this manuscript, may it be this. you don't know as much as you think you do. Nor do I, nor do any number of well-regarded and much-vaunted paragons of intellect and scientific research as currently exist in all the hallowed halls of academia. At the end of the day, we are well reminded why Socrates, still widely regarded among the greatest elders of inquiry, remains the wisest of us all. Letter of Introduction by J. G. Gent, 1669 To the Ladies of Our British Isle Ladies, it is for your diversion that this treatise hath crossed the sea and undergone the hazard of a voyage. If you meet here with any favorable interpretation of those pleasant dreams that soften your sweet slumbers, commend the author. If anything falls out contrary to your expectation, blame not the translator, whose sole design was your satisfaction. This tract hath had the happiness to breathe in the air of two foreign kingdoms, with the applause of the most Catholic and most Christian kings. Beyond all controversy, it will meet with no worse entertainment in a third, being that of the defender of the faith whose subjects come short of none of the Europeans in civility. I confess that, in this small spot of ground, there grow no rhetorical flowers, as here are found no ingenii lascivientis flosculi, or flowers of talent, no execrescencies of lasciviating wit, for the subject will not admit of a florid style. Yet I will be bold to affirm here that which stamps the impression of beauty upon the world and renders the whole universe of amiable variety. Inest sua gratia parvis, however this is small grace, is a sentence that carries as much truth as antiquity in the womb of it, and nature hath ever been so provident as to supply the want of bulk in minute things, with an exact symmetry and comely proportion. 
and herein art, her chiefest ape, doth nearly imitate her. For indisputably there was more artifice and subtlety manifested in the smaller proportion of Regiomontanus, his iron fly, than in the larger dimensions of his wooden eagle. The author, in his discourse upon this subject, intends no rigorous imposition upon your faith, nor to commit a violation upon your belief, for such arts as this of Oniropoli have no other foundation to support them but the instable basis of conjecture. This was not invented to unhinge the brain or torture the fancy, but rather to divert and exercise in your ladyships that pleasant egg of the diaphragm laughter. The most refined wits that ever I met with in this our modern age, when tired out in the eager pursuit after sublimer learning, as the noble researches of philosophy or dark intrigues of state politics, have ever had recourse to some such innocent divertisement, which, like Hellbore, purgeth away melancholy, the epidemic distemper of the sedentary student. Well may I, therefore, with modesty, trace the footsteps of such eminent authors, and plead that old saying for taking up this new subject, for I presume there are few tracts of this nature in any language, and fewest in our own. The rough draft of this translation was the product of some of those hore subsecave, the short hours that were snatched from the hurry of a tumultuous city employment, and since licked into that shape wherein it is now presented to your ladyships under the quiet calm of a rural recreation. I have met here with some gallicisms or French idioms which were so peevish and sullen that they would not by any means be persuaded to speak plain English so much so that I was constrained to force them to appear in the most familiar terms and usual expressions of our language. The alphabetical table of dreams is inverted, because they would not follow in the same order in English as they did in French, but I have neither added to nor diminished the number of them, and so consequently have done the author no injury, having only in some particulars deviated from his method for the reader's advantage. As for that additional piece of physiognomy, which is the very study of the complexion, I need say but little in vindication of it. It is a known proverb, facius index rerum. The character and sentiments of the mind are plainly and fairly legible in the countenance. It will never enter into my thoughts that you can possibly have any aversion for an art whose chiefest subject is that part your ladyships are so curious to preserve by all artificial embellishments and auxiliatory helps imaginable. But, lest I be accused of too much rudeness for detaining you so long on the porch of this palace, I will now open the portal and give you free admittance into this court of curiosity, wherein entertainment may in some measure answer your expectation. It is the earnest desire of your ladyship's most obedient servant, J. G. A Treatise of Nocturnal Dreams and Visions, and of Their Significations According to the Opinion of the Ancients. Dreams and visions are infused into men for their advantage and instruction. Wherefore God promised in the sacred pages that he will pour out his spirit upon all flesh, that their sons and daughters shall prophesy. The old men dream dreams, and the young men see visions. Both sacred and profane histories are so fully furnished with variety of examples concerning the true event of many dreams that it would argue incredulity and ignorance in natural causes to credit them not. Hippocrates is of the opinion that, whilst the body sleeps, the spirit is awake and transported unto all places where the body could have access, and that it sees and knows all things which the body could know and see when awake, and touches all that it could touch. In short, that the spirit in sleep has all the operations that the body can be capable of when awake. 
There are five sorts of dreams, which have different names according to their different qualities. The first is a dream. The second, a vision. The third, an oracle. The fourth, a fantasy or vain imagination. The fifth, an apparition. That which is called a dream discovers the truth under a hidden figure, as when Joseph interpreted Pharaoh's dream of the seven lean kine that should devour the seven fat ones, and the same of the ears of corn, etc. A vision is no other than when a man really sees awake that which he did asleep as it happened to Vespasian when he saw the chirurgeon that drew out Nero's tooth. An oracle is a revelation or advertisement made to us in our sleep by some angel or other saint to perform God's will according to their information, as happened to Joseph, husband of the Holy Virgin Mary, and the three magi. The fantasy or vain imagination happens in that instant when the affections are so vehement that they ascend up to the brain during our sleep and meet with the more watchful spirit. Then, what thoughts are employed about in the day, we fancy in the night, like an innamorato who in the daytime thinks on his mistress and in the night when asleep he meets with the same thoughts. So it is that when a person thinks to meet with anything, Oftentimes it falls out that in the night time he dreams he hath met it. It happens also that he who fasts all day dreams at night that he is feeding. If he had any thirst in the daytime, then in the night he dreams of drinking, being very much delighted with it, and that the miser or usurer desirous of money bags will discourse of them in his sleep. An apparition by the Greeks called a phantasm, is no other than a nocturnal vision which presents itself to weak infants and ancient men who fancy they see chimeras approaching to intimidate or offend them. Of these five sorts of dreams, the three former have some appearance of truth, but the last two are altogether fallacious. Yet, one must observe this of all dreams, that those which leave no impression upon the memory are insignificant, and those which we remember must be good and true if had about daybreak or at least after midnight. Before then, all these senses and faculties of the body are busied about digestion, and the spirit is disturbed by the vapors that arise from the meat and seat themselves in the brain. Such dreams are to little or no purpose. Yet, as Artemidorus affirms, he that is sober and undisturbed may dream at all times, even in the day, and there may be certain event of them. Some authors make a threefold division of dreams into those of natural, animal, and celestial things. Natural things are those by which physicians judge of the humors. Dreams of things animal are such as owe their being to the passion and the trouble that the spirit was infested with in the daytime. The celestial are advertisements of things that are divine, as that of the statue which the king of Babylon imagined he saw in his sleep, which is so accurately portrayed by the prophet Daniel. There are but few that have the gift of true dreams, or oracle, and much fewer that understand their interpretation, there being much to be observed that is not vulgarly understood. There are two principal kinds of dreams. The first kind is speculative or contemplative, which requires our consideration, because the event of such dreams is every way agreeable to the dream as we read it happened to the prisoner in the little Chastelet at Paris. He dreamed that, whilst they were putting the halter about his neck to hang him, he saw an unknown person come to his rescue with a sword, who took off the rope. 
The next day, this happened accordingly. For the judge, having pronounced sentence of death and committed him to the executioner, he was rescued by some persons that came incognito, employed by his friends to that purpose. The second is allegorical or significative, because it happens not according to the dream, but by a riddle, as when we dream of seeing an angel that signifies revelation or good news, or to see a serpent that endeavors to do mischief signifies envy and tribulation from envious persons. Speculative dreams have an immediate event but the allegorical not so soon, for there is a day's time or two between a dream and the event thereof, so that sometimes a man may deceive himself as to whether he must attend the success according to the dream, or judge it will fall out contrarily. This may be understood only by learned and prudent interpreters. Sometimes there are monstrous dreams, which ought not be listed in the number of those that are speculative, as they are those which cannot possibly happen, as when you dream that you fly, have horns, or go down into hell. These are of the nature of those that are allegorical, which carry a different signification. Dreams are proportioned according to the condition of the party dreaming. Thus, those of eminent persons, be they good or bad, will be of greatness. If good, they signify great benefit, and on the contrary, great misery. If the person that dreams be of mean condition, the dreams with their event will be mean as well. If poor, their dreams will be very inconsiderable. The rules of dreaming are not general, and cannot satisfy all persons one way, but that sometimes, according to times and persons, they admit of various interpretations. Those who dream of acquainting a second person with business that belongs not to their profession or trade, this event happens to themselves. But when they see to give any advice touching their own trade or profession, that event happens to others. He that dreams of practicing what he has heard experiences an extraordinary good sign, and he will prosper in his trade or profession. A Grecian physician dreamed that he did advise another not to marry a wife that was Roman. It happened that this physician espoused a Roman woman that brought him much trouble. Heraclides, the tragedian, being at Rome and prepared for a disputation about the art of tragediography, dreamed in the night that he was to maintain a dispute with the tragedians and judges. Yet, notwithstanding, on the morrow he was overcome in the dispute. Sometimes our dreams have true event, though diametrically opposite to our hope and desire. Amilcar, the Carthaginian general, besieging a town in Sicily, dreamed he heard a voice that assured him he would sup in the town on the morrow. This dream wrought upon him so effectually that he did hope and believe he should take it that day. To that end, having given order of his soldiers for a general assault, a dissension arose among the variety of nations that made up the composition of his army, so that the town, taking advantage of this opportunity, sallied out, and attacking that place where Amilcar was, took him prisoner, and conducted him to supper in their town. So his hope was frustrated, but not the dream. The valiant and resolute, as also the learned, understanding persons in the affairs of the world, whose spirits are distracted neither with hope nor fear, are not so inclinable to dreams and fantasies as the timorous, ignorant, and those of the vulgar, who fancy nothing all night but that which took up their thoughts in the daytime. Of the Prophetic Dream Now it is convenient to produce examples of all sorts of dreams that have a true event. The first sort is called a dream. Joseph, the son of Jacob, dreamed that his brother's sheaves made obeisance to those he had made. Again, he had another dream, 
in which the sun, moon, and eleven stars seemed to worship him, which was true. For being by God's grace and favor established governor of all Egypt, he furnished his brethren with corn for their sustenance during the famine, together with his father and mother. After his discovery of himself, he bestowed on them great possessions and gave them the land of Goshen to dwell in. King Pharaoh's butler, being imprisoned, dreamed in the night that he saw a vine with three branches that flourished by degrees, that after it had blossomed the ripe grapes appeared, and he seemed to have the king's cup in his hand, and that he pressed the grapes and strained out the wine, which overflowed the cup he presented to the king. Joseph interpreted this dream, and said that the three branches were the three days that the butler was still to remain a prisoner. This time expired, King Pharaoh would be mindful of him, and re-establish him to his office to serve him as before, which had a true event. The king's baker, who was a prisoner at the same time, dreamed that he carried three baskets of meal upon his head, and that in the uppermost there were all sorts of viands that could be prepared by the baker's art, and that the birds ate of it. Joseph, in like manner, interpreted this dream, and said that the three baskets signified three days, at the end whereof King Pharaoh would cause this poor baker to be hanged, which had an event suitable to the prediction. The same King Pharaoh dreamed that he was standing near a river, out of which there came seven well-favored and fat kine, which were devoured by seven other kine, meager and ill-favored to the sight. The same night he dreamed also, and fancied that he saw seven full ears of corn which were swallowed up by the seven withered ears. Joseph interpreted it thus, that the seven fat kine and the full ears of corn signified seven years of plenty in the kingdom of Egypt, and that the seven meager kine and ill-favored ears of corn did denote seven years of dearth and famine, during which time they should consume all that was gathered up in the seven years of plenty. Events fell out so, according to the explication. These four examples will be sufficient concerning dreams that are made under hidden figures, the truth whereof is manifestly apparent, being explained by art or divine inspiration. The second sort, known by the name of vision, happens frequently. We read that Vespasian, being with the Emperor Nero in the island of Achaia, saw in a dream an unknown person who acquainted him that his good fortune should commence when Nero should have a tooth drawn. The first person he met, after he awoke coming out of his chamber, was a chirurgeon who told him he came just at that time from drawing one of Nero's teeth. Shortly after, Nero died, as did Galba. So, consequently, Vespasian, having made his advantage of the dissension between Otho and Vitellius, was created the succeeding emperor. Emionides the poet, having interred a dread corpse which he had found on the seashore that night, dreamed that this same body appeared to him, and advised him not to venture to sea. This engaged him to remain on the shore, and his associates setting sail in order to voyage, unfortunately perished by a tempest. Septimus Severus fancied that he saw the emperor Pertinax break his neck by a fall, and that his horse made towards him, whereon he mounted. Such fell out truly, Severus being chosen emperor in his place. Jacob, the patriarch, had a vision of a ladder in his dream, which was placed on the earth, the top thereof reaching to heaven, and the angels did ascend and descend. The Lord, leaning on the ladder, promised Jacob and his posterity the place whereon he slept, and that all the families of the earth should be blessed in his seed, which happened according to the vision. 
the Emperor Constantine, leading the army which he had raised against Maxentius, saw in his dream a beaming and resplendent cross, and heard a voice which told him under that sign he should overcome his enemies. Constantine caused a cross adorned with gold and precious stones to be carried on the day of battle, and committed the custody of it to the most valiant of his army. Under these happy presages, he totally defeated the army of Maxentius, who was killed upon the place. The third sort of dream is called an oracle, as that which happened to Joseph, husband of the Most Holy Virgin, being with child. He was divinely advertised by an angel to conduct the Virgin Mary and her son Jesus into Egypt with all possible diligence that they might avoid the cruelty of Herod who destroyed all the young children. The three magi or sages of the East, after they had worshipped our Savior Jesus Christ in the manger, an angel appeared to them in a dream and acquainted them that they must steer some other course in their return and avoid passing by the place where Herod resided. As to the fantasies and apparitions, a thousand examples may be produced. We shall, over this treatise, explore very amply both of the one and the other, and because we endeavor a methodical relation, we will first discourse of those dreams that are of things natural, which owe their origin to the humors that are analogous to the four elements. Afterwards, we shall mention dreams of things animal, and consequently of the celestial. Of the Fire When a man dreams he sees fire, that signifies the issue of his choler, and ordinarily they that dream of fire are active, choleric, and furious. A man that dreams he is burnt by fire, this prognosticates a violent fever. He that dreams he sees a moderate fire in his chimney, without smoke or the crackling of sparks, it signifies that he which dreamed is in perfect health, and that his inclinations sway him to that which is good and rational. Sometimes it signifies riches, and some are of the opinion that it denotes a feast or rejoicing among relations and friends. On the contrary, when one dreams that he sees a great sparkling fire with much smoke, this signifies anger, debates, or some bad news of which he that dreams will soon be sensible. When one dreams of seeing a fire extinguished, that signifies indigence, necessity, ill fortune, and want of money. If any distempered person dreams that the fire is put out, that presages his death. When one dreams that he sees a clear, shining, lighted candle upon a table or cabinet, that is a good sign to the sick. It denotes recovery and health. If he that dreams be unmarried, it signifies that he will speedily marry, that he will have success and prosper in his undertakings, and that he will gain credit. The same interpretation may be made of a lantern or flaming torch. He who dreams he sees a candle, lantern, or torch extinguished or darkened, this signifies unto him sadness, sickness, and poverty. He that dreams he is in a ship and sees a clear light afar off shall be assured of a fair wind, shall receive no damage by tempests, and shall arrive happily at the haven. When one dreams in the night that he holds a burning light or torch in his hand, it is a good sign, and chiefly to those that are young, for it signifies that they shall enjoy their loves, accomplish their designs, overcome their enemies, and gain honor and goodwill from all persons. To dream you see a burning light in the hand of another signifies that their mischief will soon be discovered, the party punished, and that there will be no possibility of excusing or concealing it. When the light is extinguished, it signifies the contrary. When one dreams that he sees one or more houses burning, with a clear, pure fire that is not violent nor sparkling, and that those houses are neither consumed 
nor destroyed, this signifies to the necessitous goods, riches, and inheritance. To the rich, it presages honors, charges, and dignity. But if you spy them burning with a smoky, violent, or sparkling fire, and that they seem to fall and be consumed, that denotes the contrary, signaling adversity, trouble, lawsuits, shame, misfortune, and death to the dreamer. Queen Hecuba, wife of King Priam, being with child of her son Paris, dreamed that she went with a burning torch which would consume the city of Troy. This was a predictive of the ruin of her empire, of her own, and the death of all her relations. When a man dreams that his bed is on fire, and that he perishes, this signifies damage, sickness, or death to his wife. If the wife dreams it, the same may happen to her husband. When one dreams that he sees tapestry or other furniture of a hall burning, and that they are consumed, this prognosticates damage or death to the master of the house. When one fancies in a dream that he sees burning the cabinet or cupboard, which belongs to the mistress of the house, this signifies her sickness or death. If one dreams that the kitchen is on fire, this denotes death to the cook, the men or maid servants, or one of that role. When a man dreams the shop is on fire, and that it is consumed by the fire, this signifies loss of goods and possessions. If one dreams that he sees the out windows of the fore part of the house burning, and that they are consumed, this signifies the death of brethren. If the fires consume the back part, it is the death of a sister. When one dreams that the gates burn and are consumed, this signifies death to the mistress of the house, and sometimes to him that dreams. If one dreams he sees the bed posts on fire without being consumed, this signifies good fortune to the male children, as Euripides the philosopher testifies. To see the top of the house on fire and consumed denotes loss of goods and lawsuits for the master of the house and his friends. If one dreams that he kindles a fire or a candle or a torch and that it burns immediately without trouble, this signifies that the children begotten will be fortunate and honor their mother. If a woman dreams that she kindles or lights a fire, it is a sign that she is with child, and that she will be safely delivered of a fortunate child, whether it be boy or girl. When one dreams of kindling a fire with much ado, and that it is extinguished presently, it denotes damage and dishonor to the wife and he that dreams, who often proves the cause of it. He that dreams he sees a castle quite burned down and consumed, it signifies damage, sickness, or death to the master thereof. He that dreams a city is on fire and consumed, this denotes famine, war, or pestilence to that city. He that dreams he sees a man publicly burned, it signifies loss in merchandising or sickness. He that dreams he sees his clothes burned and consumed, it signifies vexation, injury, reproach, overthrowing at law, and loss of friends. He that dreams he sees a stack of corn burned and consumed, it signifies famine and mortality. But if it consumes not, it denotes fertility and great riches to him that dreams. He that dreams he sees himself burning in a fire, and suffers pain thereby, it signifies envy, displeasure, choler, and debates. He that dreams he holds a torch made of straw and carries it in public, it signifies joy, honor, and the safe management of affairs. He that dreams he burns his finger, it signifies envy and sin. On the matter of celestial fire, to dream one sees a moderate, pure and shining fire in the heavens, this signifies the menaces of some prince or great lord. To dream one sees a great fire in the heavens signifies an assault by enemies, 
poverty, desolation, and famine. On what part the fire falls from heaven, this denotes that the evil or enemies will proceed from thence. If we dream that the fire flies and descends from all sides, that is still worse. To dream you see burning lights, torches, branches, or trees on fire, descending from heaven, it signifies wars, quarreling, and sterility, as also danger to him that dreams, that he shall be violently hurt in the head, beheaded, or have his brains beaten out by an unfortunate chance or some strange accident. Of the Air Those which dream they see the air clear and serene shall be beloved and esteemed by all persons, and those who are their envious enemies shall be reconciled to them. According to the observation of physicians, they judge this person to be sanguine and full of blood, being accustomed to dreams of the air. Some eminent authors affirm that to dream of seeing the air clear and free from clouds, it signifies that a theft or thing lost shall be discovered, and that one shall overcome his enemies. Moreover, that he shall overthrow at law, be respected and esteemed by all, and that he shall make a successful voyage or journey if he be upon any such design. In brief, all good things are denoted by a clear and serene air. But, on the contrary, if one dreams that the air is cloudy, dark and troubled, this signifies sadness, sickness, melancholy, and obstruction of business. In short, such a dream signifies the contrary of that which is signified by a pure and clear air. When one dreams he is in a calm air, this signifies that his life and manners shall be good, peaceable, and acceptable to all company, and that the businesses, voyages, or journeys he undertakes shall succeed according to his desire. If one dreams he sees a soft rain shower without storm, tempest, or great winds, this signifies gain and profit to laborers. Quite contrary to merchants, it denotes obstruction, loss, and spoil of their merchandise, and the same to artisans and mechanics. Dreams of great and long continuing rain, hail, tempests, and thunder signify afflictions, troubles, dangers, losses, and peril. To the impoverished sort, they signify repose, for during the storm they are shut up and at rest. When one dreams of ice and snow in winter, this hath no signification, for the spirit represents to the memory the cold of the preceding day. But if it be in another season, this denotes a good harvest to husbandmen, and that the earth will abound in all things. To merchants and other men of employment, it signifies hindrance in their negotiations and voyages and to soldiers that their designs will be frustrated. To dream of hail signifies sorrow and trouble, yet it signifies also that the most hidden secrets shall be revealed and made known. To dream you see a thunderbolt fall near you without a tempest signifies that he who dreams shall be constrained to escape or quit his country and dwell elsewhere. This is understood particularly of grandees. If one dreams that thunder falls upon his head or on the house, that signifies loss of life and goods. Of the Water Those which dream they frequently see others or do often dip themselves in the water, according to the naturalists, are of a phlegmatic constitution, subject to deflections and excessive discharge or build-up of mucus. To dream that you see river water clear and calm presages good to all persons, and principally to travelers, lawyers, and judges. To dream one sees river water troubled signifies that one shall be threatened by some great lord, or be out of his master's favor and to lawyers that they shall be in great trouble and subject to censure. 
to dream of being in an impetuous river and not to escape signifies danger to the person of him that dreams, sickness caused by defluxions and deletory lawsuits. To dream of swimming in a great river signifies future peril and danger. To dream you see a clear river run by your chamber presages the arrival of some rich and liberal person who will advantage the dreamer. If the water be troubled, and that it seemed to spoil the movables of the chamber, then this signifies to those of the family impending violence, quarrels, and disorder occasioned by enemies. A rich man that dreams he sees a rivulet of clear water run by his house will be suddenly chosen into some charge or office, in which he shall receive honor, joy, and profit, and will prove a refuge and asylum to the oppressed. To dream you see a rivulet that is troubled signifies loss and damage by fire, lawsuits, and enemies. It is a good sign to dream you see a ditch full of fair water in a field where there is none at all, for he that dreams this will be a thriving man, and suddenly married, if he be not so already, having good and obedient children. To dream you see a ditch which water overflows the banks, this predicts loss of substance, or the death of wife and children. If the wife have the same dream, this denotes her death or the loss of her substance. To dream that you see a little pond signifies that you will enjoy the love of a beautiful woman. If a woman dreams the same, she shall have her desires accomplished. To dream that you are in a boat upon a river, lake, or pond of clear water, this is a very good sign and signifies joy, prosperity, and success in affairs. If a sick person dreams that he sees a river or fountain of clear running water, this presages his recovery. But if the water be troubled and muddy, it signifies the contrary. If a young man dreams he draws water out of a clear well, this signifies he will be speedily married to a fair maid, who will bring him a portion. If the water be troubled, he will be disturbed by her and suddenly falls sick. If he seems to give others clear well water to drink, by this maid's means he will enrich or afflict them if the water be troubled. If any one dreams that his river, pond, or fountain is dried up, this signifies poverty or death. If one dreams that he sees water flow from a place where there is no possibility it should come, this signifies care torment, and affliction. If he dreams that he hath taken up some of that water, the mischief will be of a longer continuance, according to the quantity he hath drawn. If it seems to him that it is dried up and gone, the misfortune will also be at an end. He that dreams he drinks warm water is in danger of receiving prejudice by an offended enemy and the party will be afflicted more or less according to the degree of the heat of the water, for as fresh water is good, so is hot or boiling water a bad sign. When one dreams he sees a bath, this signifies affliction or grief. If a person dreams he goes into a bath, and that he finds it too hot, he will be troubled and afflicted by those who belong to his family. This trouble will be proportional to the heat of the water in the bath, whether more or less. If it seems to him that he hath only pulled off his clothes without going into the bath, he will have some disturbance, but of no long continuance. If one dreams he goes into an extreme cold bath, the same significance is to be given of it as when it is too hot. But if it be temperate, and as it ought to be, it is a good dream, presaging prosperity, pleasure, joy, and health. If one dreams he hath carried water in a garment, linen cloth, or any other thing, or in a broken vessel that could not hold the water, this denotes to that person a loss and damage, 
and that he will be deceived by those whom he hath entrusted with his estate and substance, or else that he will be robbed by his domestic servants. If he dreams that the water he hath drawn into these things is not spilled, then he will preserve his estate, though with much difficulty. If the water be spilt, he shall lose it. If he fancies that he hath hid the vessel and water underground, he will fall to decay, and will be in danger of being made a public spectacle, and of dying a shameful death. If one dreams that he hath a glass full of water given to him, this signifies his speedy marriage, and that he will have children by his wife. Whatsoever is of glass is applicable to the wife, and water signifies abundance and fruitfulness. If the glass seems to be broken, and the water not spilled, that signifies the death of the wife, but life for the child, and so contrariwise. If a minister dreams he gives his people clear water to drink, it signifies that he will teach them the word of God faithfully, and will be instrumental to their salvation. If the water be troubled, he will teach them heretical and false doctrine. If any one dreams that he hath spilled water in his house, this denotes care and affliction, according to the quantity of the water. Of the Earth If any one dreams that he hath bestowed upon him good lands with pleasant pastures well enclosed, he will have a handsome wife, according to the seeming goodness of the land. But if the land seen be spacious and not enclosed, this denotes pleasure, joy, and riches suitable to the extent of the land. If it seemed that the enclosed lands had fair gardens, fountains, fields, pleasant groves, and orchards adjoining thereunto, this signifies he will marry a discreet, chaste, and beautiful wife, and that she will bear him very handsome children. If he saw the land sown with wheat, this signifies money and profit with care and industry. If he saw it sown with any kind of pulse, this denotes affliction and trouble. If he saw it sown with millet, this signifies vast riches to be gained with ease and much delight. If a monk or friar dreams any such thing, then it is taken for the riches and contentment of the mind. If you dream you see the earth black, this signifies sorrow, melancholy, and weakness of the brain. To dream that you see the earth quake signifies that your affairs and life are in danger of being lost. To dream that the whole earth quakes signifies an edict from the king, which will astonish all the inhabitants of the kingdom. If you dream that the house shakes, it is an edict simply against the house. This presages also loss of goods and suits at law. If the walls, doors, and top of the house fall by reason of the earthquake, this denotes the destruction and death of the chief persons of the house. If a king or any other prince dreams that his palace and throne is overturned and beaten down by an earthquake, he will suddenly die or lose his kingdom. If any one dreams that a mountain is fallen upon a valley, this signifies that some great lord will oppress and destroy good men. If any sees a town that he knows sunk by an earthquake, this is a prognostication of famine, war, and desolation by the indignation of the prince. But if he knows not the town, this signifies that the nation at enmity with the king shall be destroyed by the same means. To dream you see great ditches or precipices, and that you fall into them, this signifies that he who dreams will suffer much injury and hazard his person, and that his goods be in danger by fire. To dream of kissing the earth signifies sadness and humility. To dream of being in a meadow is a good sign to husbandmen and shepherds. 
though to others it denotes obstruction of business. To dream that you are in a fair, straight, level, and pleasant way signifies joy, prosperity, and good success, and a bad way being quite contrary. Of Navigation If any one dreams that he is walking in a boat and recreating himself without fear, he will have comfort and success in his affairs. But if the water be rough and tempestuous, it falls out contrarily. To dream of being in a ship or boat in danger of capsize and shipwreck, it is a sign of danger, unless that dreamer be a prisoner or captive, in which case it denotes liberty and freedom. To dream one sees a sea haven signifies that he will have joy, profit, and good news. To dream you see an anchor signifies assurance and certain hope. To dream one sees the cordage of a ship signifies news from debtors or benefactors. To see the sea sky-colored and moderately waving signifies joy and performance of business with facility. But if the sea be calm, it signifies obstruction and dilatoriness. When the sea is tempestuous, it denotes tribulation, losses, and adversity. He that dreams he falls into the water or into the sea, and that he awakes starting, this signifies that he either doth or will court a married woman, and will spend his days, substance, honor, and fortune with her, and that he cannot, without great difficulty, disengage himself from the hands of those that envy him, and who are his enemies. Of Vegetative, Sensitive, and Rational Creatures There are three sorts of creatures, the vegetative, the sensitive, and the rational. We will successively handle one after another. Under the vegetative creature is comprised trees, plants, flowers, and fruits that receive their nourishment, vigor, growth, and maturity from the earth and the sun. To dream of holding or smelling odoriferous flowers in their season signifies joy, pleasure, and consolation. To dream of seeing and smelling flowers out of season, if they are white, this signifies obstruction in business and bad success in his enterprises. If yellow, the impediment will not be so considerable. And if they be red, the difficulty and nuisance will be extreme, and for the most part it signifies death. To dream of seeing and smelling roses in their season of the year is a good sign to all persons, except those that are distempered, and that through fear conceal themselves, for they are in danger of death or great sickness. If the dream be when roses are out of season, it signifies the contrary. To dream that you smell of marjoram, hyssop, rosemary, Sage and other herbs of the same nature signifies labor, trouble, sadness, and weakness. Physicians are accepted, to whom such dreams are propitious. If any one dreams that he sees, holds, or smells of lilies out of their season, it signifies the hope of the thing desired will be frustrated. If one dreams that he sees or smells upon the laurel, olive, or palm, if she be a woman, she shall bear children. If she be a maid, she will be suddenly married. And if it be a man, this signifies amity, joy, prosperity, abundance, and good success in his enterprises. Of Pot Herbs and Those That Are Medicinal if any one dreams that he eats or smells of such roots as have a strong smell, as radishes, garlic, onions, leeks, and the like, this signifies a discovery of hidden secrets and domestic jars. To dream that one eats herbs of which salads are made, such as lettuce, sorrel, 
parsley, and others that may be eaten raw, this signifies trouble and difficulty in the management of affairs. To dream of eating medicinal herbs such as beets, mallows, borage, and the like, this signifies freedom from trouble and expedition of business, because they make the body soluble. To dream of eating colworts signifies vexation. The French navugental and cucumbers denote vain hope. Some are of opinion that when sick persons dream of melons and cucumbers, this is a prognostication of recovery by reason of their humidity. Of corn and other grain. To dream that you see corn on the ear and that you gather it signifies profit and riches. To dream you see stacks of corn signifies profit and abundance to the dreamer. On the contrary, to see a small quantity signifies famine and necessity. To dream of eating white bread made of wheat signifies profit to the rich and damage to the poor. On the contrary, to dream of eating coarse bread denotes profit and gain to the poor, losses to the rich. To dream of eating barley bread signifies health and contentment. To dream of eating broth is a good sign, signifying profit and gain. To dream that one sees a barn stored with corn signifies either that a man shall marry a rich wife, overthrow his adversary at law, or that he shall inherit land or grow rich by trading or gifts. It signifies also banqueting or merrymaking. To dream of eating peas well boiled denotes good success and expedition of business. To dream of eating beans signifies trouble and dissension. To dream of lentils signifies corruption, and dreams of rice denote abundance or obstruction. The millet signifies poverty and indigence. To dream you see or eat mustard seed, this is a bad sign, unless it be the dream of a physician to whom such dreams are advantageous. Of Trees and Their Fruit To dream that one sees a stately oak signifies riches, profit, and long life. To dream you see an olive tree with olives denotes peace, delight, concord, liberty, dignity, and fruition of your desires. To dream of gathering olives off the ground signifies labor and pains. To dream you see a laurel tree is a token of victory and pleasure, and if you be married it denotes the inheritance of possessions by your wife. To dream you see a cypress tree, this denotes death, affliction, and obstruction in business. To dream you see a pine Meddler or service tree signifies one is idle and remiss. To dream you see apple trees and eat sweet apples signifies joy, pleasure, and recreation, especially to women and maids. Sour apples denote contention and sedition. To dream that one sees and eats almonds, walnuts, and hazelnuts signifies difficulty and trouble. To dream that you see figs in season signifies joy and pleasure, and out of season the contrary. To dream you see a vine signifies abundance, riches, and fertility, for which we have the example of Astyges, king of the Medians, who dreamed that his daughter brought forth a vine, being a prognostication of the grandeur riches, and felicity of Cyrus, who was born of his daughter after this dream. To dream of eating ripe grapes at any time signifies cheerfulness and profit. To dream that one sees or eats oranges signifies wounds, grief, and vexation. Fruits that are ripe signify the same thing. Peaches, bastard peaches, and apricots or any such kind of fruit in season, 
denotes content, health, and pleasure to him that dreams he sees or eats them. But if you seem to eat them out of season, they signify vain hopes and bad success in business. To see or eat ripe pears signifies joy or pleasure. If they are sour or wild, the contrary obtains. If one dreams he sees a mulberry tree, this signifies fertility and abundance of both goods and children. To dream you see nut or almond trees, and that you eat their fruit, signifies riches and contentment gained with labor and pains. To dream that you find nuts that have been hidden signifies you will find some treasure. To dream you see all sorts of trees very green or blossoming is a sign of joy, comfort, and recreation. But if you dream they are dry or without leaves, rooted up, burned or thunderstruck, that denotes annoyance, fear, displeasure, and grief. If one dreams that he hath gathered the fruit of some old tree, this prognosticates you will be the heir to some ancient person. If one dreams that he hath gathered the fruit of a pomegranate tree, he shall be enriched by some wealthy person. But if the pomegranates be not ripe, this denotes sickness or affliction of some persons that are wickedly disposed. If anyone dreams that the fruit he hath gathered is rotten, this signifies adversity or loss of children. If one dreams that he climbs to a great height in a tree, he shall be promoted to some honor or dignity and have the command over other persons. When anyone dreams that he has fallen from a tree and that he hath been scratched by thorns or otherwise prejudiced, this signifies he shall lose his office and be out of favor with grandees. Of the sensitive creature, birds, and four-footed beasts. To dream you see an eagle in some high place is a good sign to those that undertake some weighty business, and especially to soldiers. If one dreams that an eagle lights upon his head, it signifies death to the dreamer. So too if he dreams he is carried into the air by an eagle. If a woman dreams that she brings forth an eagle, that foretells the child she births will be a great person, and that he will have many under his command. If one dreams he sees a dead eagle, this signifies death to great peers and profit to the poor. To dream you see birds of prey or falconry, it signifies increase, riches, and honor to the wealthy, and to the poor, quite contrary. If one dreams he sees a raven, it presages mischief, chiefly to the husband, who will be discontented by his adulterous wife. If a woman so dreams, it prognosticates affliction occasioned by the husband who will forsake her to court others. To dream you see a crow signifies expedition of business. To dream you see a stare or starling signifies some small discontent. To dream you see pigeons is a good sign that you shall have delight and content at home and success in affairs abroad. To dream you see cranes or storks in flocks in the air, this foretells the approach of enemies and thieves. In winter it signifies bad weather. To dream you see two storks together signifies marriage and procreation of good, helpful children to their parents. To see a swan signifies joy, revealing of secrets, and health to the dreamer. But if it sings, this foretells death. To dream of a swallow signifies that a man shall have a discreet wife. According to the opinion of some, the swallow and nightingale both presage good news and good luck to the house wherein they build their nests. To dream of seeing bees 
signifies profit to country people and trouble to the rich. Yet if they dream they make their honey in any part of the house or tenement, this signifies dignity, eloquence, and good success in business. If you dream that you are stung by a bee, and especially by wasps, this signifies vexation and trouble occasioned by envious persons. To dream you see many birds signifies assemblies and suits at law. To see or hear a cock crow signifies joy and prosperity. To see two cocks come to blows denotes quarrels and fighting. To dream you see a peacock is a sign you will marry a handsome wife, that you will grow rich, and be in great honor, beloved by the king and grandees. To dream of a hen and her chicks signifies loss and damage. To dream that a capon or hen crows signifies sadness and trouble. To dream you hear birds sing signifies love, joy, and delight. To dream you hear hens cackle or geese cry signifies profit and assurance in the dispatch of business. To see partridges is a sign that a man shall have to deal with women that are malicious, ungrateful, and void of conscience. Quails signify bad news at sea, debates, quarrels, piracy, ambushes, and treachery. All sorts of grasshoppers signify impertinent praters, bad musicians, and also people that steal about the countryside. If a distempered person dreams this, it foretells no good. All sorts of night birds, as the owlet, great owl, bittern, and bat, are a bad omen, and those that dream of such birds must undertake no business that day. To dream of eggs signifies gain and profit, but if there be a great number of them, it denotes care and lawsuits. Of Things Animal To see a dragon is a sign you shall see some great lord, your master or a magistrate. It signifies also riches and treasures. To dream you see a serpent turning and winding himself signifies danger and imprisonment. It denotes also sickness and hatred. To dream you see a serpent signifies you will be deceived by your wife. To dream you kill a serpent is a sign you will overcome your enemies and those that envy you. To dream you see scorpions, basilisks, lizards, and scolopendra or caterpillars signifies ill luck and misfortune by secret enemies. To dream of earthworms signifies enemies that endeavor to ruinate and destroy. If anyone dreams he sees and catches large fish, it signifies gain and profit according to the quantity he takes. If the fish are small, it signifies sadness. To dream you see fish of diverse colors signifies poison to the sick and injuries, contention and grief to those in health. To dream you eat great fish signifies deflections, catars, and melancholy. To dream you see fishing nets signifies rain or change of weather. To see or find dead fish in the sea signifies vain hope. A woman with child that dreams she is delivered of a fish instead of a child shall, according to the opinion of the ancients, be delivered of a dead or short-lived child. Frogs signify flatterers, the indiscreet and ignorant babblers. Of Four-Footed Beasts If you dream you see a lion, this signifies discourse with the king, or some great captain or other valiant warrior. If any one dreams he combats with a lion, that signifies a quarrel, and that he shall engage with some resolute adversary. If he dreams he came off victorious, he shall be inevitably so. 
If one dreams that he is carried on the back of a lion, this signifies protection from the king or some great prince. If one dreams that he is afraid of a lion, this signifies that he shall be sensible of the king's anger. If the party that dreams be of royal blood, some danger upon the king's company threatens him. However, he shall be freed, because the lion only struck him with fear. If any one dreams that he hath eaten lion's flesh, the king will enrich him and bestow upon him honor and power. If the king dreams that he hath found the skin, liver, or marrow of a lion, he will find the treasures of his enemies. If he be a vulgar person, he will suddenly grow rich. If a king dreams that a lion is brought to him bound, he will take some great enemy of his. If he fancies that he hath a tame lioness in his palace with her young ones, it signifies that the queen and his children will be a great comfort to him during his life and succeed him after his death. Dreams of leopards have the same interpretations as those of lions, only that they are more subtle and malicious than the lion, which is always generous. The Dream of Olympia, Alexander's Mother The Queen Olympia, being big with Alexander the Great, dreamed that King Philip, her husband, had sealed up her womb with the engraving of a lion which did prognosticate the valor, magnanimity, and conquests of Alexander. Of the Elephant If one dreams he sees an elephant, this, according to Artemidorus, signifies fear and danger. According to Albumazar, it signifies the dreamer to be a rich man, for he said if any one dreams he is carried on an elephant, he shall enjoy the estate of some great prince or lord. On the contrary, Artemidorus said that he was acquainted with a rich and healthful woman in Italy who dreamed she rode on an elephant and that she died shortly after. If one dreams that he gives an elephant anything to eat or drink, it is a sign he shall wait upon some great lord to his advantage. Of the Bear and Wolf If one dreams that he hath seen a bear, this signifies a rich, puissant, inexpert, cruel, and audacious enemy. The wolf signifies an avaricious, cruel, and disloyal person insomuch that if any one dreams he hath overcome a wolf, he will conquer an enemy that hath the same qualities. Quite contrary, if he hath been bitten by a wolf, he shall receive prejudice by a cruel and disloyal enemy. The wolf also signifies the year. Of the Fox If one dreams that he fights with a fox, he shall be engaged with a wary, crafty adversary. If one dreams he hath a tame fox, the interpretation is the same with the former. If one dreams he hath a tame fox at home, he shall love some ill-natured woman, by whom he will be bewitched, else some domestic that will cajole his master by his subtlety. White Wolves Pole cats, weasels, and squirrels signify the same thing, with little or no difference. Of the Wild Boar The wild boar signifies a pitiless and furious enemy, well furnished with all things necessary. If any one dreams he hath hunted or taken wild boar, he will chance to defeat some enemy that hath the same qualities as the wild boar. If one dreams he hath the head of a wild boar brought him, newly taken by hunting, this predicts that he will soon obtain his desire against his most powerful enemy. Of Swine Swine denote idle and lazy persons who live doing nothing, and who during their nasty idleness think of nothing but how to prey upon other folks' goods that they may live at ease. They signify also covetous persons, who are no way useful in their generation whilst they live, 
and advance their heirs after their decease. Of the Dog Dogs denote fidelity, courage, and affection, when we dream of such as belong to us. But if we dream of those that belong to strangers, it signifies infamous enemies. To dream that a dog barks and tears our garments, this signifies some enemy of mean condition slanders us, or endeavors to deprive us of our livelihood. If a king or prince dreams that several dogs are brought him out of diverse countries, this signifies that he shall enlist several soldiers to fight against his enemies. The Indians and Persians have always taken the dog for an army when kings dream. Of the Cat The cat signifies a cunning thief, so that if anyone dreams he hath encountered a cat, or that he hath killed one, he will commit a thief to prison and prosecute him to death. If he fancies that he eats cat flesh, he will have the goods of the thief that robbed him. If he dreams he hath the skin, then he will enjoy all the thief's goods. If anyone dreams he fought with a cat that scratched him sorely, this signifies sickness or affliction. Of the Ape All sorts of apes or monkeys signify malicious, weak, strange, and secret enemies. Of Sheep, She-Goats, Cows, and Horses To dream you see or have many sheep, weathers, she-goats, cows, and horses, signifies wealth and plenty. Cows in scripture signify the years. Of the heart and fallow deer. If any one dreams he hath killed a heart, and that he had the head or skin, this signifies he will inherit the estate of some old man, or that he shall overcome fugitive, deceitful, timorous, and irresolute enemies. Fallow deer have almost the same signification. The Ram If any one dreams that he hath been run at by a ram, it is a sign he shall be afflicted or checked by his sovereign prince. Of the Ass The ass denotes a good servant or slave who is profitable to his master and signifies also a foolish and ignorant person. Of the Mule the mule signifies malice and foolish imaginations. Artemidorus said it signifies sickness to him that dreams he saw one. Of the ox and the bull. The ox signifies a profitable servant to his master and a subject brought under the yoke of obedience. As for the bull, he signifies some great persons, so that if any one dreams that he hath received hurt, prejudice, or good by a bull, assuredly he will receive it from some great lords. Of the Horse The horse is a good sign, insomuch that if any one dreams he saw, took, or mounted a horse, that is a happy omen to the dreamer. If any one dreams that he is mounted on a stately horse of his ownership, nimble, full of metal and well harnessed, he will have a handsome, noble, and rich wife. If it belongs to another, he will receive comfort, estate, and honor by some woman that is a stranger. If any one dreams he is mounted on a horse or mare, and that he pass by a place without making his horse rest by dismounting, he shall gain honor, dignity, and fame. If any one dreams he rides upon a horse that hath a great and long tail, it is a sign he will find many friends to assist him in his undertakings. Some say that it promises him a noble woman, by whose means he will be successful in his affairs proportionate to the greatness of the tail. Quite contrary, 
If he dreams his horse's tail is cut, then his friends, servants, or soldiers will fail him when he stands in most need of them. If his horse does halt, he will meet with obstruction in his designs. If any one dreams that another rides upon his horse without his consent, it signifies that some person or other will gallant his wife and be caught in the act. Some authors are of the opinion that if any one dreams he is mounted on a nimble, sprightly, active, and well-managed horse, he will be honored by the vulgar and esteemed by grandees. If that he dreams he too violently spurred the horse and forced him to what he did, he shall be advanced to charge and dignity, and shall have honor proportional to his endeavors. In King's Dreams, the white horse is applicable to the queen's person, who shall be beautiful and virtuous. The king's horse being black signifies a debauched, rich woman. If anyone dreams that he saw a young, generous mare come into his house well harnessed, it is a sign he will be suddenly married to a beautiful, young, and rich gentlewoman, who will be delightful and comfortable to him. If it be an ill-shapen mare without a saddle, this denotes a she-servant or concubine who will bring nothing with her. Of the Rational Creature and His Parts Man is that creature whom the deity hath enriched with his most signal favors, having imbued him with a rational soul, which is a ray of his divinity, and this hath obliged all philosophers to give him some excellent titles. Plato styles him the miracle of miracles, Aristotle the sociable creature born for society. Theophrastus called man the exemplar of the universe, Cicero the divine creature, and Pliny the epitome of the world and nature's minion. All unanimously and with one consent have called him the little world, as comprehending within his own being all that is most beautiful or admirable among the other creatures that people the earth but the names and praises that the sacred pages bestow on him are far beyond the language of human rhetoric. Man was framed and made according to God's image, that he is his masterpiece, his living temple, the object of his love and grace, and his viceroy, constituted over the whole frame of nature. These elegies transcend all expression. Because the subject of man's dreams are more frequently employed about his own similitude than any other thing that falls within the compass of his imagination, we will give you an exact delineation of all his dependencies, and begin with nativity, in the next place discourse of his education, and then of his form and parts. If a woman dreams she is delivered of a child, and yet is not big with child, it is a sign she will happily accomplish her designs. If she be a maid, it signifies banqueting, joy, reveling, and nuptials, and sometimes fear and grief of the mother. If a man dreams he is big with child, this signifies wealth, gain, and profit which will soon fall to him. When a man dreams he sees a woman brought to bed, this denotes unto him joy and prosperity. If a man dreams that his wife is big with child, and that it really proves so, it is a sign the child will live, and that she will have a son that resembles the father. He that dreams he comes out of his mother's womb will, in a short time, be freed from some unlucky business, and raised to preferment. If any one dreams he re-enters his mother's womb, if he be in a remote country, this denotes a speedy return to his native country. He that dreams he sees two or three children born shall have cause for joy and success in business. When you dream of a monstrous or unnatural birth, 
as if a woman instead of a well-shaped child should be delivered of one that had two heads, four feet, four hands, or a tail, or some such thing extraordinary, or that she was delivered of a cat, serpent, basilisk, rat, or other animal. This is a bad hieroglyphic that betokens no good to the dreamer. Such a man as dreams thus ought to cordially recommend himself to God, that he would preserve him from those misfortunes that threaten him. If it be a woman that hath such a dream, many authors affirm, and Selmus Julianus in particular, who was the author to whom we are obliged for most of our interpretations, that she will have good success and comfort, shall be rich and generally beloved, and shall prosper in all her undertakings. When one dreams that he hath many small children, and that they seem to him to run about the house, notwithstanding he hath none, this signifies that it will be very difficult for him ever to have any, and that he which has such a dream will have many cares and obstructions in his affairs. He that dreams he sees an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and sucking the nurse, this signifies a choleric and dangerous distemper, unless his wife be with child, for if so, it signifies that the child will be short-lived. If it be a woman that dreams this, it is a sign that she is or will shortly be with child of a daughter, unless she be sick or her husband dies. If any one dreams that he hath a head bigger than ordinary and very highly raised, this signifies dignity and prelateship, or at least some charge or office where he shall be obeyed and esteemed. Sometimes it signifies victory over enemies and overthrowing adversaries at law. To merchants and bankers, it means heaping up of riches and recovering of treasure. If a sick person dream thus, it prognosticates a contumacious and violent fever. To dream one hath a small, light, or sharp head signifies want of spirit, servitude, and disgrace. To dream one hath the head of a moor signifies voyages and journeys to remote parts and dispatch of business. According to the tradition of the Indians and Persians. To dream that one is beheaded, according to the tradition of the Indians and Persians, and that the head is separated from the body, this signifies liberty to prisoners, health to the sick, and comfort to those in distress. To creditors, it is the payment of debts. To princes and great personages it presages all good fortune, and that their cares and fears will be turned into joy and confidence in their servants and subjects. If any one dreams that a person of his acquaintance beheads him, he will share with him in his pleasure and honor. If any one dreams that a young child who hath not yet attained to the age of his youth hath his head cut off, if the dreamer be sick, he will not live long. If in health, he will get honor. If a woman with child dreams thus, she will bring forth a male child, and her husband will die suddenly, for he is her head. If any one dreams his head is half cut off, the things above mentioned will be fulfilled but by half. If any one dreams that his throat is cut with a knife, he will be injured by some person or other. If he dreams he cuts the throat of some acquaintance, he will do him some injury. If he be ignorant of it, it will be done to a stranger. If any one dreams that he is beheaded as a martyr for religion, that man will arrive to a great height of honor, and his soul will be happy in heaven. According to the Egyptian tradition, if any one dreams he beheads an armed man, he will be entertained in the service of some great person, wherein he will mark or indicate himself in a striking or conspicuous manner. Of Wounds 
If any one dreams that he hath received from one of his acquaintance some blows with a sword in the four parts of his body, and that blood be drawn, he which is hurt shall receive some extraordinary kindness from him that struck. If the blood be not drawn, advantage and delight shall be the less considerable. If any one dreams that he is wounded with a sword, in such sort that he is in danger of his life, that is a sign he will receive several courtesies and good turns from him that wounded him, according to the proportion, number, and largeness of the wounds. If any one dreams that his king or prince strikes him with his sword in anger, this signifies he shall be advanced and honored by his prince, according to the extremity of his anger. If a king or any other person dreams that he was struck standing with a sword or knife by one of mean condition, he will be in danger of death or servitude. If a woman dreams she is struck with a sword, or that she herself, either out of courage or in her own defense, struck anyone, she will be honored and, if married, will have a male child. Of the Complexion of the Countenance To dream one sees a very handsome head and face, this signifies joy, contentment, and health. Also, if a woman dreams that she sees a comely man, it prognosticates the same thing. To dream one sees an unknown person of a brown complexion, it is a sign of honor, glory, good success, and dispatch of business. If one dreams he sees a very brown woman, this signifies a very dangerous disease. If you imagine you see a woman unknown, with long and comely hair, it is a very good sign, as well for the woman as the man that dreams, and it denotes amity, joy, and prosperity. If a man dreams his hair is long, like a woman's, this signifies cowardice, effeminacy, and that he which dreams will be deceived by a woman. Of the hair To dream one sees a woman without hair signifies famine, poverty, and sickness. To see a man bald and without hair signifies the contrary. To see a fresh, taking, Smiling countenance is a sign of friendship. To see a meager, pale face is a sign of annoyance, poverty, and dearth. To see hair interwoven together signifies annoyance and grief, and sometimes injuries and quarrels. To see extraordinary black hair, short and curled, signifies sadness and grief. If any one dreams that he cannot pass the comb through his hair while he is combing, and that he hath much ado to untangle them, this denotes lawsuits and great trouble. To see hair well combed and head well dressed signifies friendship and deliverance from a man worse of business. He that dreams his head is shaved or his beard trimmed will be in danger of losing a great part of his estate, of being sick, or running the risk of losing his life by some ignominious death. To see his hair shed signifies annoyance and loss of estate. If the king, prince, or great lord dreams that he hath a comely great head of hair, he will be victorious over his enemies, will gain much reputation, and reduce many provinces to his domain. If he dreams his hairs are grown white, his treasures will be diminished and almost totally exhausted. If his hair seems to be longer and blacker than ordinary, his wealth and honor will increase. If he dreams that his hair is cut or plucked off, his estate and the number and forces of his state and army will decrease according to the same proportion. If any one dreams that his beard is grown bigger than ordinary, he will grow richer than he was formerly. If any one dreams that his hair is grown more thin than it was formerly, 
it is a sign of affliction and poverty. If it seems a matter of great difficulty to pull off his hair, this denotes he will do his utmost endeavor to avoid misery. Of Perfumes and Odors If one dreams he perfumes his head with oils, essences, or sweet-scented powders, this signifies he that dreams hath too great an esteem of himself, and that he will be vainglorious and haughty in demeanor to his associates. If it be a woman, she will deceive her husband and wear the breeches. If one dreams his hair is frizzled and decently odored, so as to be of opinion that he is very comely, it signifies that he who dreams will be in some danger of his person, either by sickness or other ways. According to the tradition of the Indians and Persians, those that dream their head or the other parts of their body are perfumed with oils or sweet-scented powders, will live in good repute among their neighbors, and be acceptable to all persons. As for my own particular opinion, I rather incline to this than the preceding. If any one dreams he hath an ill savor, he will be odious to all people according to the proportion of the ill scent. If any one dreams he is presented with sweet perfumes, he will receive some welcome news according to the proportion of the sense in quality and quantity, and will gain profit, advantage, and honor among his acquaintance. If a person dreams that he makes odoriferous perfumes and bestows them among his friends, he will be the messenger of good tidings, which will prove advantageous to him and those with whom he entertains discourse. Of the Forehead if any one dreams he hath a large forehead, this signifies an ingenious spirit, and if it be very high, it is a sign of a solid judgment. It also denotes power and wealth to him that dreams. To dream that you have a brow of brass, copper, marble, or iron, this signifies irreconcilable hatred against your enemies. Some authors are of the opinion that such a dream is advantageous to victuallers and tax collectors. If any one dreams his forehead is broken or hurt, his wealth will be discovered and in danger of loss. This betokens fear and apprehension to him that dreams. If one dreams he hath a great and well-fleshed forehead, this signifies freedom of speech strength, and constancy. Of the Nose If any one dreams his nose is larger than ordinary, he will become rich and powerful, and will be provident, subtle, and well-received among grandees, but to dream a man is deprived of his nose signifies the contrary. To dream one hath two noses signifies discord and quarrels. If any one dreams that his nose is grown so big that it appears deformed and hideous to the sight, he will live in prosperity and abundance, but never gain the love of the people. If any one dreams his nose is stopped, such that he hath lost his scent, if he be a king, he is in some imminent danger from him that hath the greatest authority about his person. If he be a private person that hath this dream, he is in danger of being deceived by his wife, who will commit adultery with one of his friends or servants. If it be a woman, her husband will deceive her. Of the Ears To dream a man hath many ears signifies that he will gain the love of his servants and subjects, and will be served and obeyed faithfully by them. To dream that a man picks his ears signifies the same thing. To dream his ears are full and comely signifies an estate will fall to him by his parents. To dream one hath ass's ears signifies servitude. To dream one hath the ears of a lion 
or of any other cruel beast, signifies treachery or deceit from his enemies and those that envy him. If one dreams that his ears are become comelier and larger than ordinary, he will find that he will be prosperous and gain honor by those to whom he communicates his secrets. If any one dreams his ear is hurt or slit, he will be offended by some that belong to him, or by some friend of his to whom he hath entrusted his secrets. If it seems that his ear is quite cut off, he shall be utterly deprived of their friendship. If any one dreams his ears are stopped, if he be a king or prince, he will despise the requests and petitions of his subjects, and will endeavor to have them subscribe to his will upon all accounts. If he be a private person that hath dreamed thus, it is a sign he will alter his resolutions, and that he will deceive those that confide in him. If it be a woman, she will be debauched. Of the Eyes The eyes are the windows of the soul, and the ancients represent by them faith, will, and the light of understanding. If any one dreams he hath lost his sight, he will violate his word, or else he or some of his children are in danger of death, else he will never more see his friends again. If any one dreams that he is grown bleary-eyed, he will commit some heinous crime, and afterwards repent of it, being also in danger of losing his estate. To dream he hath a good and quick sight is an extraordinary good dream, and he who has it shall succeed in his enterprises. Troubled and weak sight signifies want of money and bad success in business. Of the Mouth the mouth is the rampart, house, and door, wherein all the internal parts of the human body are enclosed. If, therefore, any one dreams that his mouth is wider than ordinary, his family will be enriched and become more opulent than formerly. If any one dreams he hath stinking breath, he will be despised by all people and hated by his servants. If any one dreams that his mouth is shut up, and closed in such sort that he cannot open it nor eat, he is in danger of a sudden death. Of the Eyebrow and Eyelids If any one dreams his eyebrows and eyelids are more comely and large than they used to be, it is a sign he will be honored and esteemed by all persons, prosper in courtship, and will grow rich. If one dreams that the hair of his eyebrows or eyelids is shed, it will fall out contrary. Of the Cheeks and Lips To dream one hath plump cheeks of a vermilion tincture, it is a good sign, and the affairs of those who dream so will prosper. To have them lean and pale signifies the contrary. To dream that one hath red, handsome lips is a sign their friends enjoy their health. To have them dry and chapped signifies the contrary. Of the Beard If any one dreams he hath a comely, great beard, it is a sign he shall be pleasant in his discourse, and find out the intricacy of the matter proposed, prospering in his undertakings. If a maid dreams she hath a beard, she will be speedily matched to her content. If she be married, such a dream threatens her with the loss of her husband, or that she shall be separated from him and constrained to govern her house singly, as if she were the man. If it be a woman with child, she will have a son. If one dreams he hath lost his beard, or imagines that somebody hath pulled it up by the roots or shaved it, this betokens loss of relations, estate, and honor. Of the Teeth The teeth are taken in dreams for the nearest relations and best friends a man hath. 
The four teeth apply to children, brethren, and other near relations. The upper teeth signify the males, and the lower females. If, therefore, any one dreams he hath lost or spoiled one of his teeth, by this it is to be understood that some near relation is dead. But if, on the contrary, one dreams that his teeth are more comely, firm, and whiter than ordinary, this signifies joy, prosperity, good news, and friendship among relations. If a person dreams one of his teeth is grown longer than the rest, he will be troubled by some of his relations. The upper eye tooth signifies the father, and the lower, the mother. Artemidorus said that the teeth on the right side signify men, and those on the left, women. This is contrary to the opinion of the Indians, Persians, and Egyptians. The great teeth signify friends or relations a degree removed, and have the same signification as the rest. If any one dreams that one of his great teeth is loose or grown black, or that it pains him, one of his friends or relations will be sick or in trouble. If any one dreams his teeth are grown more comely, white and firm than usual, he will reap joy, delight, content and profit from his relations and friends. If one imagines he is cleansing his teeth to make them white, he will bestow money upon his relations and friends. If some of the teeth exceed the rest, so that the dreamer is hindered from speaking and eating, this signifies contention among relations and suits at law for inheritance. Of the Neck the neck signifies power, honor, riches, and inheritances of what sort soever. To dream that the neck is become greater and larger than ordinary, and yet so that it seem not thereby deformed, if it be a king, he will take delight and pleasure in his courtesans, will hear good news from his armies, and have success in his affairs. If he be a private person, he will be honored for his good deeds and grow richer than he was. The slender neck signifies the contrary. If any one dreams that his neck is tied or otherwise squeezed by the hand, it is a bad sign to the dreamer, and he will be subjected to him that had his hand upon his neck. To dream the neck is awry, such that the head leans more on one side than on the other, is a sign of misfortune, shame, and loss. To dream the neck is swelled by a humor or apostem signifies sickness. To dream one hath three heads upon one neck signifies dominion, power, and honor. If any one dreams his head is cut off by robbers and murderers, this signifies loss of children, relations, estate, or wife, and the same to the wife, the loss of her husband. But if he dreams he loseth his head by sentence or judicial proceedings, it is a sign of his deliverance from all trouble and mischief. Nevertheless, this dream signifies the contrary to receivers coiners, farmers, and merchants. To dream your throat is cut and you are not dead signifies hope and good success in business. To dream that one beheads a man signifies assurance of affecting business or revenge upon your enemies. To cut off the head of a pullet or green goose signifies joy and recreation. To dream one hath the head of a lion, wolf, or some other cruel beast is a good sign to the dreamer, and he will accomplish his designs with honor, will overcome his enemies, and be feared and honored by those that are related to him. To dream one hath his head in his own hands signifies loss of wife or children. If the dreamer be not married, it is good luck. If he thinks he adorns or dresseth his head, his business will succeed happily. Of Horns 
If anyone dreams he hath horns on his head, it signifies dominion, grandeur, and royalty. Nevertheless, some authors say that to dream one hath the horns of an ox, or of any other furious creature, this denotes anger, pride, temerity, and violent death by the hand of justice. To dream you see a man with horns on his head signifies he is in danger of both the loss of his person and estate. Of the Shoulders If any one dreams he hath large shoulders, and that they are more brawny than usual, this signifies good luck, strength, and prosperity. Such a dream is bad for prisoners, for to them it denounceth annoyance and grief, and that they are in danger of enduring much pain in those parts. To dream that the shoulders are full of pain, or that there is some nail, tumor, or swelling in them, this signifies trouble and displeasure from relations. Of the Ribs The ribs signify women, the upper and larger ribs being women that are born legitimate. The lower are the female relations and allies. If any one dreams that he hath his upper ribs broken or sunk, he will have some dissension with his wife, which will redound to his disgrace and displeasure. If he dreams his lower ribs are broken, he will be afflicted by his female relations and kindred. If any one dreams his ribs are grown larger and stronger than ordinary, he will take delight in his wife, or receive good success and advantages from him that hath the charge of his estate and affairs. The ribs being the walls and ramparts of the body and principal inward parts, they are applied to those that have the charge of the house, and if they receive any damage, that harm is attributed to the same persons. Of the Hips If anyone dreams his hips are grown larger and stronger than usual, he will be very joyful and healthful. If he marries, he will have lovely children. To dream the same thing of the region of the kidneys and backbone signifies altogether the same thing as the hips, and farther, that he will take delight and comfort in his wife or his heirs. To dream the hips are broken, and that you cannot walk, this denotes affliction, sickness, and loss of children. If any one dreams that his hips are black and blue from whipping, or blows with a stick or sword, this presages his death in a short time, or at least that he will hate his wife and have several grievances. If he dreams his hips are cut half through, his hope in his wife and relations will be utterly lost. Of the Flesh in General If any one dreams he is increased in flesh, he will gain gold and wealth according to the quantity of his flesh. If he dreams he is grown bigger and fatter, he will enjoy riches and delight in rich and sumptuous apparel. On the contrary, if any one dreams that he is grown lean and thin, if he be rich, he will grow poor, or at least conceal his wealth, and will seem to be in a mean condition. If he be poor already, he will die out of poverty and necessity. If she be a woman, her husband, allies, and relations will hate her. If any one dreams his flesh is grown spotted or black like a moor, he will deceive those he trades withal by lying and craft. If she be a woman that dreams thus, she will be taken in adultery and put away or repudiated by her husband. If any one dreams his flesh is grown yellow or pale, he will be in danger of falling into the distemper of a long-continuing fever. If any one dreams his flesh is full of scabs, tetters, or corns, he will grow rich, proportional to said scabs. To dream the body is full of lice, and the flesh incommodated by their eating into it, this signifies that the dreamer will hereafter get both gold and silver. 
If anyone dreams he hath eaten the flesh of a man or woman, he will enrich himself by injuries and reproach. If one dreams he hath swellings, warts, or pustules in his body, this signifies he will become rich by the revenue of his lands or by the interest of his money. If anyone dreams that his flesh is swelled by some apostem or ulcer, this must be understood of riches according to the interpretation of the swelled parts. The head is applied to the master, the neck to him that dreams. The teeth, or at least the jaws, gums, and cheeks, signify relations, friends, and allies. The shoulders to mistresses or concubines. The arms to brothers or the most affectionate relations. The ribs to women. The hands to servants that have the chiefest authority in the family. The legs and feet to the life of him that dreams or his chief servant. If any one dreams he is become leprous, measled, or full of the pox, this denotes profit and wealth with infamy. If it be a woman that hath this dream, she will be acquainted with some great lord, or at least with some generous person, who will bestow a good estate upon her. Some authors affirm that to dream such a dream signifies one shall be scoffed at and despised by all persons by reasons of some woman, but that he shall none the less obtain his ends. If any one dreams that he receives a blow with a sword by some of his acquaintance, he will have reason to be pleased with him. If it be by an unknown person, he will make peace with his friends and get advantage thereby. If any one dreams that his wound is healed, he will boast of his valor and gain honor by it in the opinion of the world. If any one dreams he hath the plague, his hidden store will be discovered, and he will run the risk of losing it. If any one dreams he is grown lean and wasted, he will be disturbed and have suits at law or of some other ill business that will occasion the loss of his estate or else he is in danger of falling sick. Nevertheless, if a woman dreams that her tongue is grown less and leaner than ordinary, this signifies unto her honor, wisdom, prudence, and discretion, by which qualifications she will be honored and esteemed by all persons. Of the Gaul The Gaul signifies a son or brother. If any one dreams that his gall is broken in his body, this signifies that he will be angry with some of his domestics, and that he will hurt them. If he be a married man, he will have some great contest with his wife, and will also be in danger of losing his money by gaming or thieves. Of the Lungs If any one dreams he hath found the marrow, liver or lungs of a bull, he-goat, ram, or any other horned beast, he will enjoy the goods and estate of some person of quality that is in great honor, to whom he shall be heir, for the horns signify dignity and sovereignty, whence it is that horns represent crowns. If any one dreams that somebody hath plucked out his lungs, or that he is hurt or ill-disposed in that part, his designs will be frustrated, run the hazard of some great danger, and lose the most useful and profitable servant in his family, for the lungs represent servants, and moderate and refresh the heat of the heart. Of the Liver and Marrow If any one dreams that he is indisposed in his liver, or that it is burnt or dried up, his estate and wealth will be wasted, and he himself die suddenly. For the liver is the source of blood, and the blood in dreams is taken for gold and riches. If any one dreams he hath seen or found the liver of any of his enemies and carried it away, he will overrule those that wish him ill and be master of their treasure. The marrow hath the same interpretation as the liver. Of the heart. 
The heart in man is the same thing as the sun in the firmament, and gold in the earth, and therefore is the noblest part of the microcosm, first living, at last dying. Herein are enclosed, as in a fortress, courage, resolution, and generosity. If any one dreams he hath pain of the heart, it is a sign of some dangerous distemper approaching, according to the proportion of the pain which is imagined to be felt in the heart. If any one dreams that he hath no heart, and that he lost it, it is a sign of sudden death, or that he will utterly fall under the power of his most mortal enemies. To dream your heart is more lively, large, and vigorous than ordinary is a sign of long life, that you will overcome your enemies and be prosperous in your enterprises, feared by all persons. The heart, in the opinion of some, signifies man in dreams, chiefly the husband, so that if a woman dreams she is ill in or hurt at her heart, the evil denounced by that dream will happen to the husband. If it be a maid that dreams thus, the evil will happen to her father or servant, if she hath one. Of the Entrails If any one dreams he hath voided his entrails at the fundament, some of his family will be engaged abroad in some quarrel, which will cause his damage and affliction. If any one thinks dreaming that he hath eaten up his entrails, he will gain by the death of some of his domestics. If he dreams he hath eaten the intestines of another, he will enrich himself by the estate of another. Of the Spleen The spleen denotes the pleasure and contentment that is between friends rejoicing. If any one dreams his spleen is enlarged and very healthful, he will be invited to some feast, comedy, ball, dance, walk, or some good company, which will afford him very much contentment and diversion. If, on the contrary, he imagines his spleen is oppressed, swelled, or that he is ill in that part, some business or other of great importance will fall into his hands, which will bring him great care vexation, and disturbance. Of the Brain The head is the citadel wherein the brain is environed, which is the dungeon of the faculties of the soul, and by its wise conduct hath dominion over all the other parts of man. If any one dreams his brain is well, and freed from all defluxions or ill-humors, he will be an able counselor to kings and princes, will govern himself prudently, and will perfect his designs with honor and profit. If, on the contrary, he imagines his brain is ill-disposed and overcharged with humors that cause pains, he will be unfortunate in his counsels and enterprises, will pass for an inexpert and imprudent person, and run into many dangers. Of Nakedness to dream you see a man naked signifies fear and terror. To dream you see a woman naked signifies honor and joy, provided she be fair, clear-skinned, and handsome. If, on the contrary, you see a naked woman that is crooked, old, wrinkled, or otherwise ill-made and black withal, this signifies shame, repentance, and ill luck. But if a man dreams he sees such a woman painted, the evil will be less. If one dreams he sees a naked woman painted, or in a statue of marble, gold, silver, or brass, and that the portrait or statue be taking and pleasing to the eye, this signifies good luck and success in business. If a husband dreams he sees his wife naked, it signifies deceit. If a wife dreams she sees her husband naked, it signifies assurance and success in her enterprises. To dream one sees his lady of pleasure naked signifies peril and danger by the craft and deceit of the woman. 
To dream one sees his friend or servant naked signifies discord and falling out. To dream that a man sees himself naked signifies sickness or poverty, and most commonly shame by means of some other person. If anyone dreams he is naked in a bath or in the stews with a person he fancies, it signifies joy, pleasure, and health. To dream you see a naked moor or some other black person signifies sadness, melancholy, and damage. If a woman dreams that she lies stark naked in her husband's arms, and yet it is no such thing when awake, this presages sadness to her by ill news. When the husband hath the same dream, it signifies amity, joy, and profit. When a woman dreams she is in bed with a moor, or else with a deformed person, whom she scorns and hath an aversion for, this predicts sickness and discontent. If the husband dreams the same thing, this signifies death or sickness to his wife or mother. To dream that a man is naked in bed with a handsome woman signifies deceit, and with a handsome man, pain, trouble, loss, damage, and deceit. To dream one seeth or discourseth with his father, mother, wife, brother, sister, or some other of his relations and friends, though they are dead, this signifies an advertisement for them to mind their affairs and to behave themselves like good people in this world. Of the Clothes or Garments If anyone dreams he hath on a suit, hat, or pair of new boots, and that they please him, this signifies joy, profit, and good success in business. If a gentlewoman dreams she is dressed in a French hood or any other attire of a townswoman, this prognosticates damage and dishonor. If a citizen dreams she hath her head and body dressed like a gentlewoman or lady, this signifies honor to herself and her husband. If a man or woman dreams they are meanly clothed, it signifies trouble and sadness. To dream one is in marriage garb signifies sickness or melancholy. If a man thus dreams he is wedded to a deformed woman, it signifies death or some great discontent. If to a handsome woman, this denotes joy and profit. To dream one hath gloves on his hands signifies honor. If any one dreams his clothes are all filthy with dirt or other odor, or that he hath bad clothes, tattered and much worn, this signifies sin, blame, and shame in the world. To dream your clothes are decorated all over with gold or other kind of embroidery signifies joy and honor. To dream one hath a crown of gold upon his head signifies favor with his sovereign prince, that he shall be honored and feared by many, and will receive many presents. To dream one is adorned with flowers and posies signifies a short-lived joy and contentment. To dream that one is well-booted or hath good shoes on signifies honor and profit by servants. The contrary signifies damage, disdain, and dishonor. To dream one walks thus shod in the dirt or among thorns signifies sickness, else in the water of some torrent it signifies adversity and grief. To dream one shall be clothed with scarlet, this denotes dignity, places of honor, and great authority. To dream one's hat is torn or dirty signifies damage and dishonor. Of the Furious and Madmen If any one dreams he is a demon or otherwise possessed by some evil spirit, he will receive benefits from his prince and be long-lived. If one dreams he hath seen the devil 
and that he was thus tormented or otherwise much frightened. This signifies that the dreamer is in danger of being checked or punished by his sovereign prince or some magistrates. Quite contrarily, if one dreams he strikes the devil, or some persons he believes to be possessed, and that he fancies he overcomes them, it is a sign that he who dreams shall thus overcome his enemies, and vanquish them with glory and satisfaction. If any one dreams that he is turned idiot and mad, and is guilty of public extravagancies, he shall be long-lived, a favorite to his prince, and gain pleasure and profit by the people. If a woman dreams she is become foolish, and is publicly guilty of folly and impudence, it is a sign she will have a boy, who in time will grow great. If she be a maid, she will be speedily married to an honest man. Of Drunkards To dream one is drunk indicates increase of estate and recovery of health. But when one dreams that he is drunk without drinking any wine, it is an ill omen, and he runs the hazard of being disgraced by some bad action and of being punished by law. If a man dreams he is drunk with sack, muscatel, or some other sweet and pleasant drink, it is a sign he will be beloved by some great lords, and grow rich thereby. If a man dreams he is drunk with pure water, he will boast causelessly of his wealth, and vaunt of another person's strength. If anyone dreams he is drunk and vomits, he will run the hazard of losing his estate by the violence of his prince, who will force him to an account of his means ill-gotten. Or, if he be a gamester, he will lose all he hath formerly won. If any one dreams that, being drunk, he is very much pained at heart and in his entrails, this is as much as to say that his domestics or servants will rob him of his money or destroy his fortune without his knowledge. Of Death and the Grave If any one dreams he is dead, he will be subjected to some great prince, growing rich and long-lived, though not without much envy. If it seems that he is put into a grave and buried, this presages he will die in a mean condition. Yet some believe, groundedly upon experience, that to dream one is dead and buried, he that hath such a dream shall recover an estate according to the proportion of the quantity of earth that is laid upon him. If a person dreams he sees one that is dead, and that he believes him to be alive, this signifies he is saved, and that we must do what he reports of his faith. Nay, farther, it signifies assurance of the dispatch of business and God's blessing. Who takes care to send us visions for our own good and for the salvation of body and soul? We have discoursed in prior pages of beheading, and now we must explain the other sorts of punishment. If any one dreams that by sentence or judgment he is condemned to be hanged, and that he imagines the sentence executed, he will be dignified according to the height of the gibbet or tree whereon he was hanged. If the dreamer be sick or afflicted, he will be freed from the disease and have joy and contentment in the end. If any one dreams he condemned another to be hanged, this signifies he will be angry with him whom he imagined he condemned, but after a small time the dreamer will place him in honor and dignity, which the condemned will abuse. According to the interpretation of the Persians and Egyptians, he that fancies he is hanged, broken on the wheel, whipped, or burned by sentence of law, he will be rich, honored, and respected for some time. But if he imagines that he was hanged or burned by a fire that did quite consume him, he will inevitably perish in the end. If any one dreams himself to be hanged, yet was delivered and came down to the bottom of the gibbet, that person will lose his estate and dignity. 
If any one dreams he hath eaten the flesh of a man hanged, he will be enriched by some persons, but it shall be by foul practice and some secret crime. To dream you see a dead man that says nothing signifies that the dreamer will be subject to the same passions and fortune as the deceased person had when alive, if he know him. If any one dreams that a dead man takes away his garments, or robs him of his money or food, it is a sign of death to him, or to some of his nearest relations and friends. To dream a man that is alive and in health has died, this signifies trouble tribulation, and being overthrown at law. To dream you see a man die a second time, who is already dead, signifies the death of your nearest relations of the same name and surname. To dream you are erecting a tomb, this signifies marriages, weddings, and birth of children. But if the dreamer imagines that he sees the tomb fall to ruin, this signifies sickness and ruin to he and his family. If any one dreams he is dead, he will be subject to some great prince and become rich, though he be much envied. If it seems to him that he is buried and interred, he shall have as much wealth as he hath earth laid over him. If any one dreams he is buried alive, he is in danger of being unhappy and unfortunate during his life. If anyone dreams he had to do with a dead woman, he will be loved and maintained by some great lady. To dream that one goes to the funeral and internment of any one of his relations or friends, or of some great lord, is a good sign to the dreamer, who undoubtedly will get an estate by means of his relations, or else marry a fortune to his own content. Of Games the spirit of man being more inclined to things that recreate than to the contrary, he dreams oftener of plays and pastimes than serious actions. The games of chess and tables is the representative of a field prepared for battle. The two gamesters are the two generals of the armies, and the tables and chess men are the soldiers that make up the two armies. Wherefore, if any one dreams that he plays at chess with an acquaintance, it is a sign that he will fall out with somebody that he knows. If he imagines in his dream that he wins, he will be victorious over his enemies. On the contrary, if he dreams he loseth, he will be overcome and bested in the combat. If the dreamer imagines that he hath taken many chessmen in play, this foretells he will take many of his enemies as prisoner. If a king or general of an army dreams he hath lost his chessboard, or that it is broken or stolen from him, he will lose his army either by the enemy's assault, or else by plague and famine. To dream one plays at cards or dice signifies deceit and craft and that he is in danger of losing his estate by some wicked persons. To dream you play at tennis signifies travail and pain to gain wealth by contention and injury. To dream you have won at dice is a sign that some inheritance will fall to you by the death of some of your relations, for dice are made of dead men's bones. Of Plays to dream you see a comedy, farce, or some other recreation signifies good success in business. To dream you see a tragedy acted signifies labor, loss of friends and estate, with grief and affliction. To dream you see persons dance at a ball, or that you are engaged in a ball, signifies joy, pleasure, recreation, and inheritance. If any one dreams he plays at any of those games with which company use to divert themselves, as questions and commands, cross purposes, blind man bluff, hot cockles, barley break, and many others, it signifies prosperity, joy, pleasure, health, and concord among friends and relations. 
To dream one plays or sees another play upon a lute, violin, or other musical instrument signifies good news, concord, and a good correspondence between man and wife, master and servant, or prince and subjects. To dream one plays or sees another play upon the virginals, clarichords, or organs signifies the death of relations or funeral obsequies. To dream one danceth at the wedding signifies sickness. To dream one hears bells ring signifies alarm, murmuring, disturbance, and commotions among citizens. To dream you play tunes on small bells signifies discord and disunion between subjects and servants. If anyone dreams he sings, this signifies he will be afflicted and weep. To dream you hear musical singing or playing in concert upon instruments signifies consolation in adversity and recovery of health to those that are sick. To dream you hear or play on wind instruments as flutes, flageolets, large or small bagpipes, the clarion, and other such instruments signifies trouble, contention, and being overthrown at law. Of Running If anyone dreams he runs, it is a good sign, especially if he imagines he runs away and flees for fear of another, which signifies security, and when one believes he runs in pursuit of his enemy, which denotes victory and profit. To dream people run one against another signifies wrangling and disorder. If they are little children, this speaks joy and fair weather. Nevertheless, if those children are armed with sticks or staves, this foretells war and dissension. To dream you see a hare or heart running signifies great wealth gained by address and subtlety of spirit. To see a horse running signifies prosperity and accomplishment of desires. To see an ass run signifies misfortune. When a sick person dreams an ass runs, it is a very bad sign. When a woman dreams she runs, this foretells disgrace and damage. Of Some Other Human Actions To dream one trades with a stranger in wool signifies profit. Loss and misfortune if iron, profit and joy if silk, satin, velvet, and other fine silks or linen cloth. If any one dreams he gathers up gold and silver, this signifies deceit and loss. To dream one carries wood upon his back, or that he is bucking or starching linen, blows the fire, turns the spit, or other things of mean concernment, signifies servitude to the rich, profit to the poor. To dream one makes pies, cakes, tarts, or confets, signifies joy and profit. To dream one makes tapestry, draws pictures, or dyes fabric, this signifies joy without profit. To dream one comforts the sick, prescribing remedies and medicines, this signifies profit and felicity. To dream one makes shoes or slippers signifies decay and poverty to the rich, and to artists it denotes the contrary. To dream one shaves or cuts another's hair, this signifies profit to him whose hair we seem to cut, and misfortune to the dreamer. To dream one manures and cultivates the earth, it signifies melancholy to those that are not of such a condition, but to laborers it signifies both gain and plentiful crop. To dream you ride with a company of men is very lucky and profitable, but with women it signifies misfortune and deceit. To dream one is in the woods or a meadow and keeps beasts, to the rich this signifies disgrace and loss, and to the poor or peasantry it signifies profit. 
To dream that one is in a tavern and feasting with his companions signifies joy and comfort. To dream you piss against the wall, and in truth it falls out sometimes that we do so indeed in such a dream, this signifies assistance of another's business or assistance with your own. To dream you do such business in the fields signifies joy, profit, and health. To dream you take birds signifies pleasure and profit. To dream you shoot a bow signifies comfort, though profit by deceit and grief through anger if you discharge a gun. To dream you read romances, comedies, or other diverting books signifies joy and comfort. To dream you read serious books and of some sublime science signifies benediction and wisdom. To dream you write letters to your friends or receive letters from them signifies good news. To dream you walk in the night signifies trouble and melancholy. To dream you play the mason or cause a house to be built signifies molestation, loss, sickness, or death. Of Christian and Heavenly Exercises To dream one is at church and prays to God devoutly signifies joy and comfort. To dream you make vows and offerings to God signifies love of the Holy Spirit. To dream you see the face of God so as he communicated himself to man and that he seems to stretch forth his arms while we invoke him This signifies joy, comfort, grace, the blessings of God, and good success in business. To dream you see some angel or saint signifies consolation, advertisement to live well, and to repent of our sins. This denotes also good news and increase of honor or authority. To dream that you do nothing but talk idly at church, and are drawn aside by bad thoughts, signifies envy and sin. To dream you see an apparition or spirit that seems of a comely aspect and attired in white, this signifies joy and consolation. If such be deformed and black, it signifies deceit and temptation to sin. To dream you see a white pigeon flying, which is taken in the sacred scripture for the hieroglyphic of the Holy Ghost, this signifies consolation, devotion, and good success in undertakings, provided they be done for the glory of God and the good of our neighbors. To dream you see an angel fly over you or your house signifies joy, consolation, benediction, and good news. To dream that one speaks to the Holy Virgin signifies consolation, recovery of health, and other good fortune. Of the Sun The Sun is the most lively image of God among inanimate creatures, and the Holy Writ calls it the throne or palace of God. As God is the principle of all fecundity, so is the sun to this inferior world, which hath obliged some to bestow upon it the name of earth's husband and father of gold, the most perfect thing that is found and drawn out of the bowels of the earth by reason of that well-proportioned temperament, which is known to the philosophers by the name of temperamentum ad pondus. The sun hath also been called the eye and heart of heaven the spirit and reason of the material world, the eternal animal, the animated star, the eye that never sleeps, the eye of justice, and the father of light and generation. The sun represents unity, truth, light, fruitfulness, sovereign majesty, heat, abundance, and riches, because he is, as hath been said, the father of gold, and ripens all the fruits of the earth. To dream you see the sun come out of the sea, or rise in the horizon, 
signifies good news and success in your designs. To dream you see the sun set signifies the contrary, yet some believe that it denotes good fortune to the party that dreams. If a woman hath such a dream, it signifies she will have a son. To dream you see the sun signifies dispatch of business and revelation of things secret. To the sick, it denounceth health, liberty to the prisoner, and a cure to him that is hurt in the eye. To dream you see the sun clouded, red or hot, signifies obstruction in business, death to your children, danger to your own person, or sore eyes, but such a dream is good to those that will conceal themselves for crimes, or for fear of their enemies. To dream that the sun descends upon your house signifies danger by fire. To dream you see sunbeams come into your bed when in bed, this signifies sickness by fever. But to dream she entirely shines all over your chamber signifies gain, profit, felicity, and honor. This presages likewise to married people that they will have a son who will be honorable. To dream you see the sun obscured or disappear is a very bad dream, unless it occur to those that have a mind to be unknown by reasons of their offenses, for to most others it signifies death, at the least a loss of sight by some accident or defluction. To see the sun shine about your head signifies grace and pardon to malefactors, and to those that are at liberty it denotes honor and glory among their acquaintance. To dream you enter a house where the sun shines signifies the getting of an estate. Of the Moon If any one dreams he sees the moon shine, this signifies his wife loves him extremely, and that she is well. It denotes one will receive silver, for as the sun represents gold, so the moon doth silver, and as gold is taken for the heart of the world, so silver is for the brain. To dream you see the moon darkened signifies the death or sickness of one's wife, mother, sister, or daughter, a loss of money, or danger in a voyage or journey, especially if it be by water, or else it signifies a distemper of the brain or eyes. To dream you see the moon darkened, then grow clear and bright again, signifies profit to the woman that dreams, else joy and prosperity to the man. The moon first clear and afterwards clouded, presages the contrary. To dream you see the moon in the form of a full and white face signifies to the virgin a speedy marriage and to the married woman that she will have a handsome daughter. If the husband dreams it, this signifies that his wife will have a son. Such a dream is prosperous to goldsmiths, merchants, jewelers, and bankers. To dream you see the moon at full is a sign to handsome women that they are beloved by those that view them, but it is a bad sign for such as conceal themselves, as thieves and murderers, for they will be certainly discovered, and it signifies death to the sick or mariners. To dream the moon shines about your bed signifies grace, pardon, and deliverance by means of some woman. Of the Stars To dream you see the sky serene, and the stars clear and twinkling, signifies prosperity and advantage in a voyage or journey, as well as good news and gain by all you do. Contrarily, to see them dusky and pale-colored signifies all sorts of mischief. To dream you see the stars disappear signifies loss and great vexation and cares to those that are rich, and death to those that are poor. 
Such a dream is only good to those that have committed some heinous offense or study to commit one, for they may do it without any fear. To dream you see the stars fall athwart the top of your house signifies sickness, that the house will be uninhabited or will be burned by accident. If one dreams he sees the stars shining into the house, it signifies that the chief person of the family will be in danger of death. To dream you see several happy comets or other stars with streaming tails signifies future evils by war, pestilence, and famine, which are the scourges wherewith God chastised mortals. Of the Rainbow To dream you see the rainbow in the east is a good omen to the poor and sick, for the former will recover their estates, and the latter their health. If you dream you see it in the west, to the rich it is good and to the poor a bad sign. To dream you see the rainbow directly over your head, or near you, signifies a change of fortune, most commonly the death of the dreamer and ruin of his family. Of Things Infernal If any one dreams that he sees the devil, it is a very bad sign for such a vision cannot bring along with it any good tidings. To the sick it foretells death, and to the healthful it signifies melancholy, anger, tumults, and violent sickness. To dream one sees hell as it is described, and that he hears the damned souls groan and complain through the extremity of their torments, it is an advertisement from God to the dreamer, that he may amend his life, and that repenting of his sins he may throw himself upon God's mercy. If any one dreams the devil speaks to him, this signifies temptation, deceit, treachery, despair, and oftentimes the ruin and death of him that dreams. To dream one is carried away by the devil, it is a worse dream. However, I find that no dream delights the dreamer so much as this, for in being awakened he is ravished with joy that he is freed from so great an evil, upon which he ought to return God thanks, and beg of him that he would be pleased to send him a good angel to guard him, and fight against that wicked spirit, which stands always sentinel to surprise us. To dream you see a serpent, or seven-headed hydra, signifies sin and temptation. To dream you see the dog Cerberus, whom the poets feign to be the porter of hell, signifies sin and arrest by an officer of the law. To dream you see the damned plunged in the flames and suffer great torture, signifies sadness, repentance, grief, and melancholic distemper. To dream you see the devil as he is drawn by painters and poets, black and hideous with horns, claws, and a great tail, signifies torment and despair. To dream you see harpies, which are infernal creatures, half woman, half serpent, or else furies, such as the poets feign them to be, this signifies tribulation and pains occasioned by envious persons, such as those who seek our ruin, shame, or death by mischief and treachery. To dream you are descended into hell, and returned thence, to those that are great and rich it signifies misfortune, but it is a good sign to the poor and weak. And that, dear friends, is the conclusion to Part 1 of The Court of Curiosity. Whether or not I record Part 2 is entirely dependent on whether anyone listens to Part 1. Provided this offering acquires sufficient views, and perhaps given some viewer feedback, I will engage in recording Part 2. Let me know. Thanks for listening.